Welcome back to part six. Um, in this section, we are going to have a look at the customer, respectively the accounts receivables subledger. So basically, the whole uh, master data thing, the custom groups, the customer posting profiles, free text invoices, and customer payments. Good. So. Um, as you can see, we have the 1st of January, so I wish you also a Happy New Year and everything. I hope you enjoyed um, Sylvester. But yeah, we are basically moving on now with the accounts receivables. Good. So um, I'm back in AX and still again in my company 010, which we um, are creating. So uh, yeah, perfect. So we move directly to the accounts receivables and we'll just quickly have a look at the setups um we will start actually because before we can create um, any kind of customer uh, itself we need to create some different kind of settings so let's just start with the customer groups so basically the customer groups itself just defines basically the split of the different summary accounts um, from the different ven uh, customer groups good so I just go and create a new one and I just make make it the same way as we already did on the accounts payable side so just domestic um, or EU for euro European Union, ROW for rest of world, plus IC for intercompany customers. Good, perfect. So um, we then can go to again back to setup and we just need now to um, say which customer group should go on to which summary account and this is basically defined in the customer posting profiles so i just create also a new one which i just call standard so standard posting profile of course you can create then an additional one for prepayments and things things like this uh, again um, we are just going to make the um, the logic based on the customer group itself so we just say that the domestic are going on specific account which doesn't exist yet so as you can see we already created the vendor summary accounts but not yet the one for the customers so therefore at first I can save it, I guess it's fine. Therefore, we need to go at first to the general ledger, then to, um, no, um, okay, chart of account, accounts, and then main account. And in here, just with Alt and N, we are able to create a new one. So it's 11000, customers, domestic, domestic, uh, it is a balance sheet account and since this one is just posted over the subledger we just need to tick here do not allow manual entry as all i already said on the accounts payable side never tick the foreign currency revaluation because we are going to reevaluate it um, over the subledger and not directly in the general ledger good then 11010 is customers european union Again, a balance sheet account. We save the record. We tick here the do not allow manual entry. Alt and N11020. Customers, rest of world. Balance sheet, save, do not allow manual entry. Alt and N. And the last one, 110, let's say 50 for customers or intercompany customers again balance sheet save and do not allow manual entry good so now we can go back to the accounts receivable to the setup and to the custom posting profiles and if i change here to the edit mode then i'm able to say here uh, which one i want to choose and because <coughs> i've chosen here the group domestic i of course need to map the domestic one to the um, summary account customers domestic Good. The same for the second one. So EU will be will go on to the customers European Union. The group um, IC is going to the 50, and the last group, so the rest of world <coughs> customers, those are going on to this. Good. 
perfect. So um, the posting profiles are already done now. The customer groups as well. Let's go back to the setup. And one important thing is in the beginning that you need to add the standard posting profiles as well to the accounts receivable parameters. So in the parameters itself under ledger and sales tax, we just have to define the normal standard posting profile which means nothing else than AX knows now that he should post with he should post the whole thing with uh, this posting profile. Uh, in settlement, I would also say the maximum penny difference, let's say 0 0.99, and the maximum over and under payment as well, means nothing else than AX would automatically automatically um, post such small differences onto the penny difference um, account, roughly over to the over and under payments account. Good. So, uh, what else um, in the setup? We have this one is fine, this is fine, this is fine. Perfect. What we also go to create in here, we already did it on the uh, accounts, uh, accounts payable side. So, the method of payments and the terms of payments. So, it means nothing else than I can go in here <coughs> into methods of payments. And I normally also create here just based for for each bank in the end I'm also just going to create one method of payment um, <clears throat> it's basically because that's the good thing is then later on when you are going to post the payments that AX automatically gives you the offset account so automatically the correct bank account and you don't have to choose anything actually good I say UBS Swiss francs and in here in the posting types I say bank and I can choose here the bank account. On the account receivables itself, I would not go over a bridging account. We did it on the accounts payables. On the accounts receivable, it just makes sense in some cases, for example, for check payments or whatever. Here as well, the file formats, um, it means nothing else than you would be able to add uh, in here kind of import formats like for Switzerland um, ESR uh, imports or whatever in the end. For the moment, we just leave this away. So because um, there are not yet that many import formats available, actually. So just uh, two formats from Japan. So uh, we just skip it for the moment since this is a technical preview, there is not yet everything available good i create as well one for ubs euro ubs euro maybe also to say the period on the accounts payable side should be total normally here you can leave it with invoice good um the bank and the bank then of course is ubs euro and we also don't use a bridging account good again the setup terms of payment let's just have a quick look so we have here those from the accounts uh, payable already available. So this is basically fine for the moment. The same should be valid for the cash discounts. So we also have the cash discounts payment method already available based on the ones that we've created in the accounts payable. Good. Uh, this was it for the moment. This means nothing else than we can actually now go and create already a customer. So this means I can go to all customers and before I do so, let's um, assume that you want to have a specific number sequence for the customer. So we just also change here the number sequence. So the number sequence number is also on the accounts receivable parameters. And then we can say here on the number sequence that we want to adjust the customer account number sequence. So this means Yeah, I just quickly go back. It seems that when you are already in this field, then you cannot jump to the related table. But if you just click somewhere else and then click on it, not even then, no, then it is, then it is possible. Right. Good. Um, so let's say we do want to have that. Uh, we want to have the customers in a way that it starts with uh, five hundred thousand. So we can just say we want to start here five hundred. So we have the logic that all the customer is 0, 1, 0, minus, and then 500,000, and then always plus 1. 
uh, on the accounts payables we have it with 800,000 so just that you always can distinguish between uh, a customer and a vendor just based on the number good I click on new and in here I can then say my first my first customer it's a domestic customer and therefore the currency is euro he has net 30 days sales tax group we need to add it of course it is a c domestic the country itself is then germany zip code let's say it is in mainz street Good. Um, I can then directly say I want to save and open the customer I wanted actually. So I just clicked on save <clears throat> because there is one thing missing under the payments default. We need to add here then as well the method of payment. And since it is a euro customer, you will normally pay it to the UBS euro account, hopefully at least. And yeah, perfect. So. I can save this customer and we have our first customer already available. I create quickly a new one. So I say my first ROW customer. So the, it means nothing else than it is from somewhere else in the world. Somewhere else in the world has 60 days. Sales tax group is then C rest of world. And let's say he is in Switzerland. Um, 8640. Um, Alpe Jona Strasse. And the city is Rapperswil. Good. Okay. I save this customer as well. And I I'm directly on the customer. This is fine. I go to the edit mode and add here as well the UBS so the method of payment. Um, I'm not sure if I changed the currency. Let's quickly check. No, I didn't. So the currency should be, of course, or the default currency, of course, should be then Swiss francs. Good. I save it and. This means now nothing else than we have already our customer available and we are or should be actually already able to post our first free text invoice. Uh, free text invoices are basically invoices which are not done over a sales order, which means in the end normally nothing else than it is um, non-operational sales. So from a from a Swiss chart of account um, logic, it would normally go on to kind of a 80,000 account so non-business related revenue or it can also be a reduction of costs but it's it is normally not going on to um, a 30,000 account so it's not an operational sales good therefore we are just going to create um, of course we need to have a kind of an account to post on it which means nothing else then we are just going to our general ledger accounts and main accounts and just created with alt and n again a new main account good i say 80000 80000 um non-operational sales it is a profit and loss account and this is it already i can say control and s uh, do not allow manual entry uh, is of course not ticked because well uh, we, di we directly post onto this account over the free text invoice good um yeah so let's go and Add here as well kind of a validation uh, we we just say that we always does we, we want that it is not possible to post without a VAT code onto this account 
it is quite an important setting actually because with this setting you can basically then say you can which main accounts uh, is a, a VAT code needed and on which it doesn't matter. So to do that you also need to switch to the legal entity level so not it is not on the chart of account level always to keep in mind chart of accounts level is always uh, things that is valid for all the companies which are using the same main account uh, chart of account and the legal entity settings is then just for each specific legal entity good so i just click here on add and i can then choose here uh, my company so i just click here on add and now i'm able to say in here that i want to add actually a sales tax validation on this main account 80000 so i click on sales tax and now i have several options so i can say here um I can say okay it is optional which is the default which is a default value which means nothing else than uh, AX doesn't check anything at all I can say it is required which means nothing else than any kind of code is needed so this means you can um, it doesn't it doesn't check if it is really a sales um, code or um, a purchase code but he checks if it is if there is a code available you can also say just one is valid then i can say okay i want to say in here which sales tax code it is or i can specify a list good and in the list i can say we are doing it over the list for example i can say well okay on this main account just all sales vat codes are allowed so this means nothing else and i can say well sales export would be allowed um, beside that also sales of goods european union goods full goods reduced Good zero service European Union uh, no the other was normal service this one is service service European Union and yeah those are all good so this means nothing else than we have added here our first VAT validation on this main account and said just that it needs to has um, it needs to have a VAT code and just sales VAT codes are valid. One important setting that you need to do is that this kind of check is actually um, done is in the general ledger setup. So this means in the ledger setup general ledger parameters and then in here under the tab sales tax you need to say validate tax code yes if this one is not um, on yes then nothing will be validated at all therefore you just need to activate it in here i actually normally put here as well to check for the sales tax group to error which means nothing else and it is not possible to post without a sales tax groups in the vendor respectively in the customer subledger good perfect so um the default item sales tax group by the way i would leave it blank Good. So this means we can now go to the accounts receivable and we can create a free text invoice. Free text invoice, as I already said, you're selling a fixed asset, you are selling any kind of other things, just non-operational sales, actually, that you just want to have kind of an invoice. So for example, I just click here on new, I choose here my customer, so my fit to my god my fit my fit customer <laughs> i totally wrote it incorrectly good i add here the date first january it's fine currency euro is fine 30 days and the payment method is ubs euro and i have to add the language as he said as he's saying in here um 
and the language is not available again at yet at the moment on this grid so i think with the right mouse button i can also personalize it and i can say i want to have add a field i want to add a field and it is the language good insert and now i see here the language and i can say well the language is ah, no let's use e n u s so american english and i just quickly save it important is add it to the customer as well I, I forgot it before so just click here on the customer account number and in here i can then say well this one is e n u s blah e n u s and for the e n u s save good and for the other customer the rest of world customer uh, the same thing also e n u s save it good i can go back and back again and i'm on the free text invoice again <clears throat> um, i'm now in the grid view actually i think i had somehow the option that i'm normally directly in the grid view but you can always over options and then change view you can just change the view from the grid view to the header view or to the line view in my case i go to line view now good perfect so this means nothing else than i can say um monthly rent so it's just a description for house at abc street good and the nice thing is now that i can directly type in here the main account so the non-operational sales good um, based on our setup we need to have as well a financial dimension on this line because yeah we, we said we said it in the account structure that a cost center a cost center is needed for all pnl accounts and therefore we need to have a cost center as well and this is actually here under the line details and then in the tab financial dimensions line good the unit price is 100 so let's check what is going to happen if i try to post it without sales tax code because at the moment because i just have a sales tax group and no item sales tax group ax would not calculate any vat code at all which means based on our validation settings we would we expect to end up in an error and as you also see in here the combination of sales c dom and item sales group is not valid since it has no result in a sales tax code blah 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 so it is not actually not even possible to do anything because we end up in this error so let's assume we did some kind of error so we just on the customer master data so the sales tax group is actually retrieved from the customer master data and let's just expect we um not expect let's just assume we added the wrong sales tax group onto the customer so one from a vendor and here the item sales tax group would be full in this case ax would actually calculate the sales tax but it is a purchase sales tax code and we expect now that when i try to post it that we will end up in a never because we just we basically said that uh he should he should say so he should check if there is a sales sales tax code but we'll see it right afterwards good um i say yes i want to print the invoice and i can click on okay and we expect now that we have um, an error absolutely right so i can say close and i can have a look here at the message detail and ax is telling you that the tax code pg full is not allowed for the account so uh, our validation is actually working pretty good therefore we just need to correct it of course if you would have it wrong on the customer you need to change it on the customer master data as well good now this time we expect that it works so i click on ok and i also ticked here to print the invoice just that uh, ax sends you the um or ax is telling is showing the um the invoice either directly on a printer in a pdf file for example you can also send it directly via mail in a pdf form for example but in my case i just want to have it on screen
And now we wait while AX is processing it. And it seems that it is working fine because AX is going to show the invoice right now or quite soon. <laughs> Perfect. So um, we have now the invoice, we can print it, we can export it, we can do whatever. Of course, the layout itself is not always, not always that nice, so it is always kind of at least some things which needs to be adjusted um, on the layout. Good, so um, we have a unit price of 100. Important is in sales tax, uh, in free text invoices as well as on um, sales orders. AX is normally or by default calculating it with, as the net amount. So it just makes it, it just adds the sales tax. So 100 of line amount plus 19% tax. It was different in the, in, the, in the invoice, vendor invoice journal where we worked with gross amounts in the end. Good, perfect. So we have our we have our invoice, and we just want to have a look at the postings. So if I go hmm, distribute the amount, no. <clears throat> Where can I have? Oh, okay, all right. So okay, if I'm on the free text invoice in tab invoice, I can say I want to go to the invoice journal. Then I see the invoice, and if I'm on the invoice, I can click here onto the voucher, and we would expect that he has that he posted actually why is he ending up on the journal or voucher journal number why <laughs> okay <clears throat> it seems that he is going to end up that is wrongly connected um let's have a look at transactions maybe at first so we have here transactions again to voucher and I'm ending up again on the journal. Why is he going to a journal? Seems for me it look for me it looks as well as a kind of a bug because um, because actually over the bottom voucher you should always end up in the general ledger and not in the journals but really directly in the vouchers. But of course, we can also have a look at the posting of the voucher over um, another uh, inquiry. So we can go to the general ledger, inquiries and reports, and then voucher transactions. And in the voucher transactions, we can say, I just want to have the postings for my voucher. And I can say, OK. And I'm ending up here as well on a journal. Are you kidding me? Uh, so again, voucher transaction, and I just want to see then. Let's have a look at all vouchers, and OK. Oh, I, um, so it needs to be the one from today. Uh, it, it was the correct grid actually, but it doesn't seem was there an error. So let's go quickly back accounts receivable um, invoices, all free text invoices. What state does it have? Complete invoice. There is an invoice posted. First of January two two thousand sixteen voucher blank um let's have a quick look at this it's strange but um there can be it can be that the in the batch transfer rules bah scheduled batch never do that never do that always add here as so in the in the general ledger ledger setup general ledger parameters meet parameters always add here synchronous because otherwise uh as before, he wanted to do it over a scheduled batch job, so the postings into the sales subledger is not is 
the don asynchronically so this means it posts just the sales at first without posting it to the general ledger which is in my opinion totally stupid so always add here the batch transfer rules to synchronous good um really basically important this means now that this posting should appear a little bit later or periodic task i think i can also batch transfer for yeah, this one source document type free text invoices free text invoice fiscal year 2016 period name period one and okay okay and now let's see once again accounts receivable um invoices all free text invoices and let's have a look at the invoice and invoice journal and voucher ah et voila okay yeah so that's really just the batch shop always always look that um, you have that, that it is set it up as a synchronous payment and not as a synchronous posting to the general ledger and not an asynchron, uh, asynchronous one so not over a batch job because otherwise you don't have real time data which is just in case when you would have millions of track transactions per day um, maybe sensible but normally normally actually not Good. and we have exactly here um, the posting that we expected so we um, debited the customer with 119 we um, have operational sales of 100 with the cost center 000 so admin as we added and we have VAT payables of uh, 19 and posted sales tax we also see that he's posted it with the sales tax code SG full with the amount origin 100 and the actual sales tax of 19 Perfect. So uh, let's quickly post here another one. Or what you also see, customer domestic, of course. I just quickly post two um, two new free text invoices, just that we have a um, little bit something available when we are going to post the the payment. It um, actually. So I say here, rest of world customer. It's Swiss francs. Uh, that's fine. I add here a line rent rent i add here one so rent two again onto this main account it is rest of world i also add full unit price 200 and in the financial dimension i say here as well it is admin good i post it and I say okay. Uh, I don't want to print it. Um, cancel. Good. Okay. It's complete. So he is posted. And because we changed now actually the rule that it is synchronous, the posting should be available as well. So if you click here now on the voucher, then it is already available. And what you see as well, based on the customer group, he posted the customer to the customer's rest of the world. And of course, it is um, with an export VAT code. Therefore, there is no VAT. And the amount in transaction currency is 200 Swiss francs. And this is the amount in the accounting currency, which is in this mandate Euro. The sales tax itself will be look, looks like this. So we have sales tax code as export with the amount origin of 200 and without any actual sales tax amount. So also absolutely correct. So let's create the last one. So let's say an additional, so rent, rent again again on our non-operational sales um, let's just post here this time is it, it is zero i don't know wh why this should be different than before and i also don't know why the amount should be different than before but it doesn't matter at all i just say here um zero 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 for the cost center i don't want to print the invoice i just want to post it good and in this case as well the invoice should be posted and we also should have the voucher automatically directly available yes because it is now synchronous and the posted sales tax is sg0 which is also absolutely correct 
Good. So let's move on then with the payments. So the payments of the customers is also done over a journal. So we need to create a new journal, which means again, when we want to create a new journal, we also need to create a new number sequence. And since I'm still not able to um, go to the main table, um, we always need to start from the total behind because we cannot really switch from one place to another. So we need to create the number sequence at first in the organization administration, which means I can say, I want to create a new number sequence, I say 0, 10 minus um, CP, customer payments, payments, I say in the scope, it is, it is not shared, it is just for the company and it is for the company 0, 10. I don't want to have the company, but I want to have a CP and it should have six digits and the largest number should be then of course 999,999. Uh, I can then go to general lecture, general lecture and then journal setup and journal names. And in here I can click Alt and N to create a new customer payment journal, custom payments off with the journal type customer payment and the voucher series should be our newly created voucher series which can't be chosen because it is not continuous because I forgot to add the continuous one. This means I cannot save it, this means I need to delete it and I just need to choose here, just I need to choose one that I can save it at least before I go and switch it back. So I save it, I go back to the organization administration, number sequences, number sequences, um, the CP, I go, I click on it, I switch to the edit mode, I say continuous, yes, here and save it. And now I can go back to general lecture and to our journal. Right, and I go to the edit mode, I add here the voucher series, I save it and now it's work, it is working absolutely fine. Good, so let's go now to accounts receivable and let's do our first payment. So in the section payments and then payment journals, I can go and click Alt and N or onto the plus button here. I can choose my customer payment, my first customer payment. I can go to lines or I can go to enter customer payments. I actually like this that is screen here, the enter customer payments section, because if I click on this, I have actually two options. I have, I have either the option to search by a customer or I can search for a transaction. So this means always depending on what kind of information you have, you can choose, should I search for the customer or should I search for the transaction, like for example, for the amount. So let's assume the first one is we know that it is um, our first customer. So the first payment that we that we uh, get is from my first customer. So this means nothing else than I can go in here. I can say I'm searching for my first. And I can say instead of begins with, I can, I guess, still work with this kind of syntax with the stars. <laughs> Not anymore really not anymore. It seems so that this is not anymore working. So this means, do I really always have to change it up here? I hope not. Because in the prior versions of AX, we could always work with the stars and I always worked with the stars and just basically not that I always had to choose here, you know, which one it is, but um, anyhow, so this means Ach so, I had, of course, I had a typing error, so I just say, let's try it. this exactly, and star fe star, nope, this is not working, um, contains, and then I really need to take my, 
my bit. So let's just say it contains this one I want to have. So I search for name fit and okay. At least this way it is at least this way it is working. It seems like that the star things at the moment is not anymore work not anymore working at the moment, but yeah. Good. So this means now, as soon as you've chosen here the customer, you have down here all the invoices from the customer itself. So this means nothing else than you, the only thing that you need to do is you just need to add here, let's say the customer paid 119 plus 120 minus 0 0.5. So let's just, oh, come on, the calculator is also gone. Oh, that's a pity. That's really a pity. Okay, so the fields are not anymore, at least at the moment, as before every amount field was a, a calculator in the prior versions. At the moment, it is. it seems that it is not anymore. That's also kind of a pity, but yeah. So I just say here, I want to pay. So I just mark those, actually those two, which I want to pay. So for example, he um, paid, so actually he, want, he paid those two invoices, but he didn't pay um, 239, but he just paid 238.50, for example, for any reason, but basically fine. I can say save in journal and I can move on with the next payment. So. Let's say the next payment we are going to search over the transaction. So for example, we know that um, the amount is 200. So this means nothing else than I can say, well, the amount is between, and I can say between 199 and 201. I can say apply, and then I have just this invoice. For example, so this is one possibility to search for the amount. Of course, you can also search for the invoice number, which would hear the um, transaction identifier, actually. Good. As soon as I choose here this invoice, AX is doing more or less everything um, automatically. So I just need to say here that he paid 200. And I can say save in journal. And it's basically fine already. So this means now those two payments which we got um, are now saved in the journal. So this means nothing else than if I just quickly go back and here I'm now on the journal again. This means if I click now on lines, then I should see those two transactions. Yeah, so exactly, exactly right. So this means nothing else than AX just saved it into this journal. Of course, you can do some stuff like you're still able to say now um, here, for example, under functions. No, not here on the function, but on the settlement, you can say, for example, the same way as on the vendor side, you can say, well, OK, you know, that's actually not true. He just paid this one, for example. And if you click on OK, then AX asks you again. If you want to um, change the amount, then you can say yes, and then he changed it. But in our case, I just say in both case, uh, he paid actually both, and yes, please change it. Good. I change here the amount back to 238.50. And OK, just to show you what is going to happen. Good, so this means nothing else than this should work and I can post it. You have new messages. Number of posted voucher is absolutely perfect. And what you see here as well is posting result for journal batch voucher number, blah, 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 zero, so 50 cents uh, is automatically posted to the over respectively under payment account. Remember, we've added the 0 0.99, um, 0 0.99 um, euros as a threshold for automatic postings as over and under payments, which means nothing else than if I go here to inquiries, no, not anymore, it's here to voucher. Let's have a look at first to the 200. So if you click here to vouchers, 
then I should, should just see here that he reduced the customer rest of world summary account. So this one is zero now. And he posted it onto the bank Swiss franc account. So onto this account number with 200 Swiss francs. So totally correct. The other posting is a little bit different. So first of all, of course, he reduced um, the customer domestic with the 230 8.50 and the bank account we received also 238.50 now on the summary account itself we had in the beginning 239 so ax should of course post the under over and under payment also against this customer domestic summary account but where is this voucher well, it is actually the logic that AX is creating in such a case, um, a separate voucher. So it is not on the same voucher. It is in the background, a second voucher, but those voucher are connected. So related to each other. So this means nothing else than you have two options. Either you can click here onto the related vouchers button where you should see the 50 cents, as you can see here. and. From here, you can then go to the voucher of these 50 cents, and then you see in the end, nothing else than he reduced the customer domestic account, which is now, of course, again, zero, onto the rounding differences account with the cost center zero, zero, zero. So absolutely, absolutely perfect. The other possibility, if I go two times back, is just to see all related vouchers. Then you see the original posting plus as well here the second voucher for the rounding difference actually so this is basically how ax is working so in the end now if i have a look at the trial balance i should have of course a zero amount for the customer respectively vendor accounts so yeah as you see here that's absolutely correct just quickly have a look at the parameters uh, 1st of January 2016 until the 31st of December 2016. And OK. And as you can see here, we have in total on the customer on both um, a zero balance in the end. And we just have some uh, non-operational sales. So perfect. This was it for this section. I think we covered um, everything. In, in here yep absolutely absolutely yep so this means in the end um, I hope you enjoyed this session and the next session will then cover some intercompany settings so general lecture in intercompany not yet sales but just um, kind of intercompany postings between two um, intercompany um, mandates right so perfect um, I hope you guys see you then in part seven bye